our study of the Bible today continues with the canon. And then we'll get to the silent centuries of the Bible. Now, I know you heard the word canon. And it's not that thing you put a, a ball in it and it shoots. That's another type of cannon. That's a cannon that, that kills. But we got to be careful because if we look at the dictionary, and let me, let me bring up the dictionary. I'm sorry if people on Facebook can't see. But the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, that they claim, you know, since 1828, you see this? They're proclaiming, you know, from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Let me bring up my sword searcher. And when we bring up Webster's 28 Dictionary, they have here, Ecclesiastical Affairs, Law, Rule of Doctrine, Discipline, enacted by a council, well, even in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, that is not the Bible. Look at Webster's Dictionary today in, I don't know if there's a copyright, probably copyright 2021. But look, number one, a regulation or dogma decreed by a church council. That's at Webster's 1828. Number two, the most solid, unvarying part of the Mass include the consecration of the bread and wine. That's number two. The Roman Catholic Mass, which is an abomination in all the Testament from Genesis to Revelation. The eating and drinking of human body and blood is an abomination. And Webster, Miriam and Webster Dictionary has that number two. Daniel Webster doesn't even have number three. Number three is our definition. The authoritative list of books accepted as Holy Scripture. So if you were to run to the dictionary, oh, what's the word canon mean? You will find the heresy and the lie of the Roman Catholic Church in the Mass, which is also celebrated by the Lutherans. I thought that was quite interesting. So, the canon is an authorized list of the list of the books to be found in the Bible. And that we have already discussed, we discovered and studied the Apocrypha books. And they don't have the authority to be in our canon. Though some Bibles will have, including the King James Bible, will have the Apocrypha. But we'll see, that's not canon. To be a portion of this canon, the books desirable to be circulated, read, and accepted without reservation as being divinely inspired. So you can't say as far as a canon book of the 66 books in the Bible, you can't say, well, you know what? This book, whatever it is, it attacks me and my group of people. This book, the Bible, whatever it is, is against our church. It's against me. It's against my organization. We don't want it in the case. That's not the authority. You are not the divine inspired authority. 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 Of what belongs in the scriptures and what doesn't belong in the scriptures. They did not yield to any doubtful books. If, well, let me look at number three. 
Number four, they took the place when it came to doubt. When in doubt, throw it out. Don't you think this should be in the book? No, they said, you know what? No, we don't. Bye. But this would be a good... No, there's doubt in it. It's not allowed. There's no authority. There's no divinely inspiration that fits into our Bible. They took a loan they took loan that which is totally believed by the churches. And this wouldn't be all the messes of the churches we have today. This would be that church from Antioch, the group of Christians To those that adhere to the Word of God. I believe the King James Bible is the only Word of God in the English. No other. And when they took the place in doubt, they threw it out. The experimental aim of the Bible is a measured to be complete and final revelation of God. There are 66 books in the Bible. Not 65 and not 67. There is nothing less than 66. And there is nothing greater than 66. The Bible authorized by God equal. The 66 books of the Bible. It has been proven the power to save and change people's lives. I've read Moby Dick two or three times, maybe four. I've read The Invisible Man twice. <laughs> I am reading Journey Around this, the Earth in 80 Days twice. The Journey to Ascend to the Earth two or three times. But that hasn't changed my life. That hasn't done nothing for me. That has given me no inspiration and no revelation of God. Matter of fact, in some cases, it's going against God. God specific and specifies that in his written word that he would complete and finalize the revelation. Hebrews 1-2 has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also made the world. So I don't care what any Pope said. I don't care what Muhammad said. Or Joseph Smith. The canon has been closed equal to 66 books. There is no latter day revision. Of Jesus Christ. There is no Quran. Of God. They're not inspired. And they're not authorized. By God. They've been authorized by man. But man has no authorization. Exodus 20 verse 1. And God spake all these words saying and the question is and always is when it comes to the Bible thus saith the Lord thus saith God did God say it did God authorize it did God inspire it I mean the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
I mean the God that was born of a virgin in Bethlehem who lived 33 and a half years and died upon Calvary according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture was seen above 400 men and is seated at the right hand of the Father today. And he's coming back halfway, not coming to the earth. We coming to get his church, and he'll come back to the earth the second advent. Is that the authority? Where the Roman government says, I find no fault in him? Deuteronomy 4 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I commanded you. Modern Bibles add and subtract. Neither shall you diminish aught from it. Modern Bibles are in a violation of what God said. God said don't add. God said don't subtract. Your NIV, your NASV, your Good News, your New King James, your Amplified, your English Version are all perversions. And violation of what God said. God said, "You shall not add unto the word which you command, which I command you. Neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you." I, I hear the modern Bibles get read. They are not. They are not. The word of God. They have done what God said not to do. Psalms 19.7 The law of the Lord is perfect. You don't need to change it. You don't need to rewrite it. You got problems with words or something like that? Put it in the margin. You got problems with ye's and days and thou's and that? Put it in the beginning after the title page and give a description of what ye and thee and thou's mean. I got a reference Bible, and there's sometimes when they put the reference of a word and they put it in the and they put it in the center column. Oh, okay. And then I got reference Bibles where they got notes, and you look at those notes, no, that's not okay. That's a heresy. The law of the law is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Deuteronomy 8 3. He, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. That's a loving God. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know. That's what manna means. Manna means, what is it? That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. And if you got a modern Bible, you can't live because you do not have the very words of God. You are getting filth. You are getting impurity. I almost saw a bad word. Well, let me say, when you got a modern Bible, you got dung going into your eyes. If you hear a modern Bible being quoted to you, you're getting dung, doo-doo, in your ears. You better rest assured I am a King James only. Hey, listen, I, I stole, my first Bible after I got saved, saved I stole, was, uh, the, was it the good news? The Bible that has the pretty pictures in it, the little stick figures. I stole that where I worked for a home for boys operated by the Catholic Church when I got saved. And then I got me a, um, a Gideon's. Little green pocket NIV Bible that I read at, at work. 
before I was introduced to the heavenly, wonderful, great word of God. That is the King James Bible. Take your living Bible and look at the SOB that Saul calls his son. Look, take your modern Bible and see the verses of that have been removed. The Ethiopian eunuch in the modern Bible does not say, I believe on Jesus. He went and got baptized. Psalms 11989. My birds got us. You hear you hear noise in the background could be my birds. Psalms 1 1989. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That's not gonna be those NIVs, E Bibles, and B five four thumbs and E I E I O. You that have modern Bibles, you will be handed a King James Bible when you enter the gates of New Jerusalem. That makes people mad. I don't care. You want to be mad at me? Get in a line. Take a number. You know? Plenty of people are mad at me for what I teach in free. Just get in line. Take a number. Now serving number eight. Number eight, will you step up and be angry? Plenty of people ahead of me. Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. You know what pure is? You know the, 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 the proper definition? I don't know who taught me this. But I, I learned from somebody. Pure is a perfect definition that has been untouched by man and beast. The moment man touches, it's not pure no more. The moment an animal touches, it's not pure no more. Pure, be untouched by man and beast. Every word of God is pure, it has not been touched by man. You say, well, God, men wrote the Bible. Yes, man is the pen. Man is the pen. And the Holy Spirit is the ink. And the hand that held the pen, Belshazzar, the hand that wrote the Ten Commandments, Moses, the hand that stooped down and wrote on the dirt or the sand, Jesus is the very hand of God. And Ezekiel was handed the word or the roll, the book, by a hand. And that hand was said, Ezekiel chapter 3, to be God. The word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And thou add thou not unto his word. You can get proper tracts and books and printed paper and leaflets of all the modern versions. Lined up with the King James, where the modern versions add, subtract, change, and footnote. I can give you an address. I can give you tons of addresses. I can give you people who put those on their Facebook posts. I can give you websites. That you in your modern Bible are in heresy before a God in Jesus who is God in a holy heaven on his throne. God 
will declare to every modern Bible, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. The Bible, not the people. They read it. The modern Bibles are a work of iniquity. God will have nothing to do with it. Now, I'm not saying the people that read the modern Bible, I'm not saying the people who are involved with the modern Bible are, are lost. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the Bibles. If it ain't King James, it ain't the Bible. Add thou not unto his words, least he reprove thee. He may not reprove thee on the earth, but he'll reprove thee at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. I believe many of the Bible revisioners are not saved. I, I, there, hey, there are preachers and Christians out there that give those that rewrite the Bible, change the Bible, and revise it. They give a little more leniency than what I do. I can't see how anybody would, Jesus say, if you love my words, you'll keep them. And then you change them. That's not loving the word. And thou be found a liar. Anybody who has changed, who has been involved with the revision work of the modern Bibles of the school of Antioch and Westcott and Hort, if that's your Bible family, your Bible tree, that's a tree of lies. And it's not the tree of life. All right, the silent centuries. It's the completion of the New Testament in the original autographs in the early 4th century A.D. Now, there was original autographs. But you do not and cannot get them today. If anybody says, we've got the original part of a handwriting of the Apostle Paul up for auction. It's a lie. It's a phony. There are original autographs, but you can't get them today. But they, the original autographs, do come in part of the silent century. Now, we're not talking about the 400 years between Malachi in Matthew. We're not talking about those, those, those we're not talking about. We're talking about silent centuries we'll look at in the moment. The Apostle John dies in 90 AD. Jesus Christ dies in 33 AD, thereabouts. At 400 AD, the oldest complete manuscripts, copies of the Bible, we went through that, in possession, different books of the Bible. So in 400 AD, we have to read, to look, to examine manuscripts of the 66 books that are in our Bible, or the proof of the writings of the church fathers that lead us to the 66 books of the Bible. 310 years after John died, the Apostle John, are the silent centuries. From 90 AD to 400 AD are the silent centuries. I didn't mean after John. 310 years from after John died, 90 AD to 400 AD. They're silent. There was nothing biblical written in our canon after John died. That's it. Though the Bible has not been completed yet, the death of John seals and finishes the books of the Bible. No one after John in their writings are found in the canon that we just read, Scripture. 
Now their writings, such as the church fathers, which we'll look at Lord willing next time, will prove what was written in the originals. Though we don't have the originals. But as far as the Bible and the Word of God circulation, there were between 90 AD and 400 AD, it was quiet. As there was quiet between Malachi and Matthew. That even in the tribulation period, the Bible in Revelation records that there was silence. I think it was one hour. Where is the evidence of the writings? And the writings themselves. We can't have the original, but we can have the evidence. If a boss comes to you and gives you an assignment, and you do that assignment, and you copy the paperwork onto your computer, and the boss says, well, let me have that paper I gave you. And oh, boss, that paper got destroyed. And my dog ate it. The originals is dog poop. But there is evidence of the original on the computer where the work was put. Now, you do not want the originals that's dog poop. You want the evidence. All right, well, let me see what you type. So, There, this period of time has been rejected. It, they reject the historical accuracy of the Bible. Putting on the autotoxicity of the very word of God that you won't even find the sign years mentioned in the seminaries, the colleges. They'll fill it with something else. Archaeology during this period, 310 years, 90 AD to 400 years, support the Bible. When they go back and they find the clay pots and the writings and the wall hangings, which they had, they will find the Bible scripture. And from the archaeology and from the accuracy that we do have the Bible and the evidence, we do have the fact that there are 27 books that make up the New Testament. And those books were completed before the Apostle John died. Your Christian faith Sits a hundred percent on the accuracy of the Bible. It's either is the Bible correct or is the Bible inaccurate and full of lies? Will I get gold, silver, precious stones, and an inheritance? Or will I get or lose some virgins? Will I go to a place called New Jerusalem? Or will I populate some outer space planet somewhere? See, I have quoted to you the Bible. And I have quoted to you the Koran. 
and the other testament of the Latter day saints. Which one is correct? Which one is accurate? Which one is your faith? Is very important to rely on. If these New Testament books, the 27, are not correct, then it's just as any other bookshelf on the library. If the Bible is inaccurate, infactual, unfactual, you would get most more reading out of Shakespeare. I never read Shakespeare. But if the Bible is accurate and factual, you better put your heart and dedication and your faith in it. And too many Christians avoid the Word of God. Too many Christians avoid the Word of God. They won't read it. They won't even open it. They don't even bring it to church. And churches today don't even open a Bible. Shame, shame, shame on you. Isaiah 8, 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, that mutter. Should not a people seek unto God from the living to the dead? Your familiar spirits and your wizards that peep, and they're dead. Come to God that's living. Jesus told the Sadducee, he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Where will you go? To a wizard? To a dead man? To the spirit world? To your horoscope? Where do you go? I go to my doctor. I go to alcohol, I go to sex, I go to drugs. Or, will you seek God? And God's answer in 820 of Isaiah, to the laws of the testimony, if they seek not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. Many people come up to me, I am witnessing, I'm preaching the gospel, and they'll apprehend me, they'll they'll fight me, they'll fight against God, and, and I let my light shine. Do you tell them about, I let my light shine. You're in darkness. Because you are saying, hey, what you do is not effective, turn people away. That's not, but... The Bible says, preach the word to every creature. Have you told them the God? Well, I don't tell them about the God. I just let my light shine. Then you are in complete ignorance of the Bible. People, I'm good. I said, well, the Bible says there's none that do it good. You are in complete ignorance of the Bible. Don't go, Have you, judge not, least you be judged. I'll handle my Bible. You want to find that in the Bible for me? Because I want you to read verse 2. Don't just give me one verse. Give me both verses. They couldn't find that verse in the Bible if that was the only verse in the Bible. Copies of the Bible, copies... Copies of the Bible copies. There are copies of the Bible copies. Copies you got may be copies of the copies you got. Your King James Bible that you have now is a copy of the printer who got a copy of the copy to the copy. Runs back to the copies to 1611. That date back to the 15th century. Manuscript copies to the 348 A.D. So now we're going to start getting what we call the Bible. 
Jesus did not have the Bible. Paul could not say, open the Bibles to Philippians. Wait a minute, hold on, I didn't finish. It took a while for John to say, all right, let's look at Matthew. And John's gospel was a later one. If you think that Jesus and Paul and Peter walked around with their copy of their Bible, you're crazy because they didn't. At one point, Jesus is in, in temple. And they hand them the scroll of Isaiah. They didn't have the, the print of the Bible in print. They had it in their heart. Big difference today. We have the entire Bible. We can get the entire Bible. We can print it. We, we can get it printed. We can have it online. We can get it on our phone. And it is the least read and the least believed. In the seminaries, which I call sinaries, the apostles passed on things they remembered about the Lord passed on verbally. I think Jesus said that. I kind of think. I'm not sure. What do you think, Peter? That's what's taught in school. In turn, was passed from church to others an oral tradition. No one wrote it down. Well, how do we get the manuscripts? How do we get the copy? How do we get the fragments? If no one wrote it down. Then many years ago, many years, the verbal and oral traditions were written down. Finally, somebody said, hey, they invented a pen. Let's write it down. And yet Jeremiah tells us that he spoke to Baruch and Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah in the ears that God was speaking. The original autographs were forgeries without any true evidence. And who has the true evidence? Well, the scholars. They're the ones that are perfect. They're just Pharisees and Sadducees. They're no better than the Pope. No matter what version. But you have a general message of the Bible on all the matters. So, even the King James and all the Bible, it's a general message Bible. They got one out there. The message Bible. It's not Accurate, the seminaries are saying. It's full of holes because they used the pen knife. I think it was Jehudai. They're the ones that made it holy of holes, not holy of God. The King James translators made the word of God holy through prayer and through the Holy Spirit and the works of God. Scholars took out their pen knives and their pens and scribbled and made the Bible whole as in a ditch, holy. The liberal understanding, there is no way by the passing of time, you to know what Jesus really said. You see, what Jesus said in your Bible, whatever version you have, it's hearsay. It's no better than the media reporting. It's just like a cop writing down what the witnesses saw an hour later. It's not... 
divinely inspired and complete by God. That's why there are churches that any Bible you want, because who cares? It's not the Word of God. And Stiley comes in with the King James Bible saying, This is the Word of God every period. Come. Including the italicized words. In heaven on a typewriter. And that messes them all up. Because what Stolly says about the King James, the seminary idiots will tell you that even the very words of Jesus in red, that's not what he said. And that's your modern Bible. In the King James Bible, the words I read, if you got a red letter Bible, that's exactly what Jesus said. The general idea would validate the other editions of the Bible. So all the Bibles are the same. Really? Have you read the Bibles up against the King James Bible? I have. My grandmother had a Bible that had SOB, son of a, you know what? And when I showed her the SOB, the son of, you know what? My grandma took that Bible, threw it in the garbage, and got herself a King James Bible. There is a difference. When Philip's talking to the Ethiopian eunuch, I believe that Jesus is God. I, I don't believe how, what he said, but I believe that Jesus, all right? Your modern Bibles, the Ethiopian never, eunuch never said that. He says, what hinders me baptized? And the modern Bibles, they put them in the water. Catholic doctrine. Um, I'm trying to think of the other churches. The Episcopal Church and all that. Baptism, not belief. The words are not to be but a general idea. And they'll say, well, Isaiah, another Isaiah. It wasn't really Jeremiah. Jonah is a fake, is a tale. We have the witness of history. That is the time of the silent centuries, 310 years. And then you'll start coming. God will start working. And the Catholic Church will start killing and persecuting because the Bible will start to be written. The Bible will come to us in writing and it will anger those who are opposed to the Bible. 